his mouth shut mm-hmm. while he's doing yeah, that. You know, big... will he be the team player? Yeah. Uh, There's some questions earlier on in his career. He did have some. Well, he was younger. You know, he did have some some dust ups in the in the in the uh, clubhouses that he was in. But uh, you know, we'll, we'll we'll have to see. We'll stay tuned. Give him the, give him the benefit of the doubt. Uh, moving on now, just general talking about the bench. Uh, so we've already covered Jesus Montero, who mm-hmm. will most likely be on the mm-hmm. bench. We know Gutierrez is going to be on the bench. Yeah, in the, in the platoon role, fourth outfield. And yeah. probably Chris Taylor, although there is a wild card of Luis Sardinas, who we acquired from the Brewers. Right. Uh, so that, yeah, Luis Sardinas, who is another kind of infield backup backup infielder type. I don't know if there will be room for him on the roster because they may want another outfielder. But we'll, we'll, we'll see how it we'll plays see. out in spring training. Um, but, yeah, I think it's a solid bench. Um, guys that can play multiple positions, except for Montero, mm-hmm. who is who is DH who, first who's, base and only. DH first base only, but he's <laughs> a good backup first baseman. Yeah, he's adequate. <laughs> adequate yeah. backup first Very baseman. Good. And uh, I think it's a solid bench. All right. Uh, so then let's let's just switch over to defense, of course. Okay. Uh, well, it, well, pitching. it's called defense. Pitching. <laughs> uh, we'll start with the rotation. So obviously we know we know Felix obviously Wait, anchoring. He, I really? think I think he's going to anchor. I think he's going to be the, oh, the ace. Probably. Okay. Probably. Ninety percent chance. Maybe ninety five. Uh, Felix Hernandez. Then we've got Kuma back. Yeah, we got Kuma Isashi back. Sashi Wakuma great, is returning. It was a great, it was a weird sequence how that worked out, but it, we're good. Glad to have him back. Crazy. So we got then we then we acquired Wade Miley in a trade that we'll we'll get into a little bit later. Mm-hmm. Uh, we still have Taiwan Walker. We still have James Paxton. There's Mike Montgomery. There's Nate Carnes, who was another the centerpiece pickup. of a, of another trade that we did mm-hmm. later on. Uh, we'll we'll cover also. Uh, but we brought him when the in the in the idea to bring him in the rotation. And we still have Vidal Nuno. Mm-hmm. So who will be the probably the fourth and fifth starters that are really well, that are, aren't locked? Wade Miley is being paid too much to not be a starter. Right, wait, wait, Miley. So we know it's going to be Felix, in. Kuma, and Wade. And honestly, in the fourth spot, I think Walker's pretty locked in too because he was really good last year. Honestly, he did, he did yeah. Yeah, and uh, I, the question marks are the other four. Um, the nice thing about this is is Depoto made sure that there was depth in the rotation because oh, yeah. pitchers get hurt, and that's something we found out last year. They a couple guys got hurt, and there was nothing there to fill in for mm-hmm. them, and we had guys in the back of the rotation that were just getting shelled. And and, and, and there were games towards the end of the season where we were just doing relievers. Yeah. And we did like five relievers p- pitch in one game. We didn't even have a starter. Right. So I, I think I think for the start of the season, I I, mean, I know it's, Paxton's problem has always been his health. Yeah. Can he stay on the field? But I think that they're going to want him in the fifth spot to start the season. Mm-hmm. Uh, probably Montgomery in a long relief role. Yeah, I and, can see that. And Cards and Nuno, I, hopefully, if they can, stash him in Tacoma. Um, if keep they him can. in re- regular if they can, uh, yeah. repetition. Yeah, keep him in regular I, I, I repetition. Do, yeah, I do have to agree with you. I yeah. like the idea of Montgomery mm-hmm. in the bullpen or as a long guy because he seemed to struggle as he got later into the games. Yeah, the third time around, he isn't fooling anybody. Yeah. So, as a reliever, he might be able to ratchet up his fastball another couple miles an hour, and he might be able to you know make miss more more bats yeah. as a reliever. And he still might be a guy that as a long guy, he could still be a guy come in for the spot. Yeah, start, he can get, still get, get you five innings. Yeah, and, yeah, do no problem. Mm-hmm. Uh, so then, moving into the bullpen, the only the only three guaranteed that I've got penciled in right now is Steve Sushek, who we signed for a uh, closing role. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've got Joaquin Benoit, who we uh, traded for with long time closer. And of course, I'm totally I'm I'm totally butchering these names, I'm sure. <laughs> and uh, Charlie Furbush, who is just still around after uh, missing some time last year. Our best loogie, yep. Yeah, so uh, after that, I mean, who do we got? We got Vidal Nuno, maybe. Mm-hmm. We've got, uh, we mentioned Montgomery. Mm-hmm. We've got Evan Scribner, mm-hmm. we've we acquired from the Athletics. We've got Jonathan Aro from the Rangers, I believe. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've got uh, Anthony Bass, we got from San Diego, or yep. not San Diego, you got Texas. Uh, and, yeah. Anyway, Anthony Bass is in the mix. We got some. We got some other guys. I mean, basically, I what he did here. I mean, it's what you have to do with the bullpen. You get a couple. You get a couple anchors, and then you, you build a pile and see who comes out of spring training, who looks good in spring training, and kind of go with that. Um, and I think it's the way to go. You're you're gonna have some odd guys out. You're gonna have some guys that look good. I mean, bullpens are volatile. And yeah, that's kind of just the way things are. You kind of get twenty guys storming against the wall. See, see what sticks. It. See who's feeling it. Yeah. yeah okay. All right. Um, all right, so then we'll, let's let's talk a little bit more about those trades that we, we were discussing earlier. Um, so Wade Miley, 
uh, is an acquisition from the uh, Red Sox. I actually played for last year, and he was a long time Diamondback before that. Mm-hmm. Uh, we we actually spent uh, Ronis Elias and Carson Smith to get him. Well, clearly Carson Smith was the feature of this yeah. trade. Uh, Elias was wildly inconsistent as a starter here. I you know I, I wish him the best and everything. Mm-hmm. Um, Carson Smith was costly. I thought he was going to be the closer of the future. Um, oh, so did I. And I'm sorry to see him go. Yeah, and I. It was one of the more questionable trades he made. Um, I, I like Carson Smith a lot. Wade Miley certainly solidifies the rotation to mm-hmm. a large extent. He is. He's not a great pitcher. He's very fly ball heavy. He's well, very, he'll, that's why he's that's coming why, to Safeco. That's why he's coming to Safeco. Yeah. I know I need, he's building a team around the ballpark, but I mean, uh, Carson Smith was a costly loss because he had years of club control left, and he was. Uh, he was just, he was just a he was just really promising young closer, but um, so you, overall good move bad move uh, you push uh, we'll have to wait and see. Okay, all right. Uh, I I I have to say right now I think it's it hurts to lose Smith. Um, I, like like you said, I you know Elias really wasn't a great you know force for us, but I do wish him well. Uh, but. He doesn't hurt as much. Wade Miley, I, I've always I, I've watched him when he was a Diamondback. Uh, he he he's got the potential to be very good, and and in the right situation, you know, in the right ballpark, I think he can do very well as a good innings eater, as a number three or number four guy, um, reliable starter. He's not gonna not gonna do anything big. I think it's a good move. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we're going to move on to the Leonis Martin trade uh, with the, yeah Anthony Bass. We mm-hmm. also required with him, and uh, we got them from uh, Texas Rangers. It cost mm-hmm. us uh, Tom Wilhelmson, the bartender. Yep. Patrick Killahan, who is our uh, prospect in Tacoma. Yeah, very uh, good prospect. Very good third baseman. Yep. Or left fielder. Yep. Uh, and James Jones, our uh, off the fourth outfielder for uh, the Mariners. Mm-hmm. Last couple of years, he's kind of bounced back and forth. What do you think? That was a good well, move or a I, bad move? I think it was a good move. Uh, Killahan shows. A lot of promise, but um, I think he, he, you have to you have to give away something to get some get something. Oh yeah. And uh, Wilhelmson, he's a middle reliever. I mean, they still have a lot of value versus mm-hmm. position players. James Jones isn't very good. <laughs> so <laughs> he's a four A player. He, he's a four A player. Uh-huh. Uh, Le- Leonis Martin uh, was. I mean, they needed they needed center fielder with Austin Jackson going away. They needed to shore up the defense out there. I think it was overall a very good trade. <laughs> Yeah, I also I think I think it, it, it what it did is it helped both teams. Uh, it gave some depth to uh, to Texas. It got us a starting center fielder, which is great, which is what we needed one that can one that can field and cover that big spacious outfield we've got. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, and then it was just outfielder or a reliever for a reliever. Uh, mm-hmm. Kivlahan it hurts, but you got to spend something to get mm-hmm. something. So it, overall, good deal. Uh, we'll move on to the Nate Carnes transaction. Uh, Nate Carnes was acquired from the Tampa Bay Devil Rays. It was the first deal of the uh, the off season mm-hmm. uh, for. Uh, uh, we got Carnes. We got a CJ Riffenhauser. Riff, Riff and R- Riffenhauser, Riffenhauser yeah. Or, yeah, and Boog Powell, mm-hmm. uh, which we gave up Brad Miller, a, a Logan Morrison, and Danny Farquhar for. Okay, uh, so, so was it worth it? Well, yeah, Boog Powell is a top flight prospect. So I mean, the fact that they and. They did have to give some things up. I mean, Brad Miller, obviously, he's also a very good young player, but there was nowhere for him on this team. Yeah, he, 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 he had no place. Odd man out. Uh, so he was kind of the odd man out. Uh, Logan Morrison, uh, they needed to they needed to improve at first base over Logan Morrison. He's he's and Farquhar honestly had a rough year last year. Um, so I think overall it was a good trade. Riefenhauser is a very minor prospect. Carnes gives him gives him spot start. Give him gives him rotation depth. Um, I think it was a good trade overall. I'm actually very excited about this deal because mm-hmm. Nate Carnes has a lot of potential. Uh, he could project to be out to be a number, even a number two starter in the mm-hmm. majors. He just needs a little more time, a little more seasoning, and a good situational, uh, a good, a good outfield behind him. Mm-hmm. You know, and uh, Boog Powell, <clears throat> like you said, he's a great, uh, great prospect. I'm still doubting his ability to, to play center. He might have ultimately slot into right, mm-hmm. which is fine for our future. That's okay. Uh, losing Brad Miller, no big deal. Lo- Logan Morrison, no big deal at all. Farquhar, like you said, and and also our clubhouse, our 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 uh, off, our 
our front office had played games with his head. Mm-hmm. They they sent him down to become a starter, and yeah. so he started for like three games, and they brought him back to be a reliever. Yeah. They were messing with his head. It was time for him to go as well and, and get a fresh start. A good, I wish him well. And, yeah. and then Riffenhauser we actually used for the next trade, which we'll go into right now. Uh, Mark Trumbo. We traded him <laughs> and Riffenhauser to Baltimore for the second half of our new catcher battery, uh, Steve Clevenger. Well, Riffenhauser had a great career as a Mariner. Absolutely. He made it, what, a week? Yeah, and you know what? He helped us get rid of Mark Trumbo. And he helped us get rid of Mark Trumbo. I think Trumbo. it was this was, an, this was an addition by subtraction. So, uh, it's just so everyone knows, Mark Trumbo is Matt's favorite player in the entire major leagues. No, not at all. <laughs> and, uh, but it was, Mark Trumbo is personified everything that Jag Z was doing wrong. Mm-hmm. Uh, he was an all-power, no on-base, slugger type. Can't field. They can't play, in, they can't play defense. And Where do you play? Him. Yeah, and the fact that we got more than a than a box of corn uh, cracker jacks for him was was a we, great yeah. Game. I would have been happy if they gave us a back a, a pack of smokes. I mean, yeah. you know, yeah. So I, I think that was a great trade, and uh, thank you, Riffenhauser, for contributing to the <laughs> to the cause. We appreciate you. So let's go into our prediction on the final finish of the Mariners. Uh, I want to hear your position in the AL West and your overall record well, plus my 500. I, I think the, the way this team's constructed, it's really good. I think they're I think they're heading for like 87 to 90 wins. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're I mean, it's not all world. Uh, their biggest problem is going to be the fact that they they are in the toughest division in all of baseball. Yeah, I mean, the Angels are really good. <laughs> the Astros are out of their minds good. They're, that team is completely loaded. Um, so I, I think I think they're going to be a little bit better than the Angels. I think they come out come in second. And probably get in for the wild card, um, have the one-game playoff. I have to agree with you on the hardest division in baseball. Uh, it's absolutely crazy how deep this is. Watch out for the Rangers, too. You're not giving enough mm-hmm. props to the Rangers. Yeah. But I think we're going to come in second uh, behind the Astros, who are incredibly stacked. And uh, we'll become second, I think about 88, 89 wins maybe. Mm-hmm. Uh, so seven or eight games above 500, and I think we're going to do very well. I think we're going to make the one-game playoff, and after that, with the flip of coin, we'll see where we go beyond that. But uh, I think the first playoff appearance in, in what, 10, 15 years or yeah. whatever, it's, it's been forever. Uh, so with that, uh, we're going we're gonna to wrap things up. That's all the time we have for today. Uh, I want to thank Ian Loney. Uh, for the expert commentary, and I want to give a big thanks to Bob and Abraham, who are directing and producing our show and doing the editing for us. And we'll return with some more in-depth and continuing coverage uh, once spring training has begun. Uh, in the meantime, check us out at www.seattlesportsunion.com. Watch any of our videos here on YouTube, and join us during games on Twitter. We have at Seattle Sports U, and uh, like us on Facebook, of course, also as a Seattle Sports Union. Uh, Thank for uh, for Matt Page, for Ian Loney, for Abraham and Bob. Uh, thank you for watching. <laughs> <laughs>